Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content, and I'm delighted to say that joining me on the program today is Rob Hughes, who is Head of Wireless Solutions Marketing for Fujitsu. Welcome, Rob. Thanks very much for joining us today. Now, we're going to be discussing Open RAN and VRAN, and especially how this can optimize energy use and power requirements. So let me first of all ask you just how important is Open RAN to sustainability and energy efficiency? Well, Open RAN, I think, is very important to sustainability and energy efficiency. With, uh, with Open RAN, you can mix and match different network elements from different providers. So if somebody comes out with a more efficient um, uh, radio, then the operator has the flexibility and the option of introducing that into their network much more rapidly. They don't need to wait for their incumbent supplier to get around to deploying the same kind of capability in their radios and getting it at the right frequency, et cetera. Um, as soon as something becomes available, they can deploy it in the network. So Open RAN allows people to deploy new innovations at scale much more rapidly, uh, regardless of whether that innovation is for energy efficiency or anything else. And in terms of innovation, what new energy savings features are we seeing in radios today and what might we see in the near future? Well, there's a lot of new things that are happening with radios regarding energy efficiency. Um, there's one sort of category of capabilities that relate to miniaturization that are kind of unique to Fujitsu. Um, so what we're doing there is by combining multiple chips into one, um, and using some high, high dielectric substrates to, to reduce the size of the power amplifier block by a factor of eight. So we can take a, a power amplifier block from that size and shrink it down to, to something much smaller. So we're able to remove the lead lines to, to reduce power loss there. Uh, similarly, we're able to do impedance matching without using isolators. So again, we're able to reduce power loss there. Uh, and then finally, because we do our own uh, chip design and development in-house, we can optimize the gallium nitride devices for the specific power and the specific frequency of a given radio. So those sort of capabilities together, uh, we can save in around 25% of, of, uh, of power. So those are some of the new things that are starting to come out in the new radios being deployed today. That's all really encouraging, Rob. Now. Can you tell me more about service management and orchestration and the RIC, the RAN Intelligent Controller, and the role that automation will play in sustainability? Sure. That's another area where there's a lot of development happening. Um, Open RAN introduced the idea of uh, a RAN Intelligent Control so that they could have apps um, optimize different portions of, of the network. And those apps can be developed by third parties or, or whomever. Um, and some of the first apps to, to come out were our apps related to power savings. Um, but some of them are better than others. Um, there's a category of them that are, are very much focused on turning off the power to a given radio if the radio is only used for capacity. So if there's already coverage there, uh, then some apps will, will turn off the power to, to a given radio at a fixed point in time. But we've found that artificial intelligence and machine learning can be used to greatly improve the effectiveness of power savings apps. So, for example, rather than just turning the, the, the power off at a fixed time, we can use AI and ML to predict and anticipate what the user experience is going to be like if we turn off the power to a, a given radio. Uh, and so then we can turn radios on and off based on when the AI and ML engine anticipates that they're going to be likely to be needed. Um, so by doing that, we're, we're able to, to greatly improve the, the efficiency of the solution. But even more importantly is the solution is able to learn. So if somebody comes out and develops a, a new residential development or puts up a new office campus, then the system will automatically detect the new traffic associated with that development and start adjusting accordingly. And that way, we're always able to maximize the amount of power savings 
while ensuring that we're always continuing to provide a quality user experience. Now, we know that virtual RAN solutions improve energy efficiency by pooling multiple distributed or centralized units that allow the operator to use a smaller number of servers and hence a smaller amount of power. What additional innovations has Fujitsu contributed to VRAN? Well, there's a number of areas where the, the DUs are, are evolving as well. Um, we've focused a lot of our energy on developing higher performance distributed units. And one of the things that we've, we've come across is that by, um, by communicating with the accelerator card much more frequently, we're able to add and improve the latency budget for the front hall. So we're able to extend the range and the distance the radio has to be from, from the distributed unit, in some cases up to 50 kilometers, but that kind of depends on the circumstances. Um, so once an operator is able to extend the range of the RU from the DU, it greatly amplifies all those pooling benefits that you mentioned. Um, so we're, we're able to add more radios to a DU that is, has been deployed in a, in a centralized RAN architecture or configuration. Uh, so then they get the benefits, whether it's more efficient use of hardware or it's reduced sites that allows them to do a fewer number of site visits for maintenance. Um, that, of course, translates into uh, more uh, savings for carbon emissions on vehicles, etc. So that, again, there's a, a whole set of, of, of capabilities that are happening there. Uh, another thing that we're, we have developed is dynamic resource allocation. And so with this, we're again able to use AI to predict when traffic on a given pool of DUs is, is going to be low. And uh, if the radios are connected via an eSIPRI switch, then during a maintenance window, we can groom the RUs onto a smaller subset of the DUs and turn the power off to one or more DUs. So again, getting energy savings there. Uh, a third way that we're improving things is with VRAN Autoscale. And this kind of works the same way as dynamic resource allocation. Only now we're applying it to a pool of CUs instead of a pool of, of DUs. Uh, so the same idea, AI to predict low traffic. Uh, and when, that's, when that, that low traffic period is there, we groom the DUs to a subset of CUs and, and turn a CU off. Again, all of this is designed to use the absolute minimum amount of power necessary uh, and turning power off when it's not needed while also making sure that we retain the capacity so that we can turn it on and enable it whenever it is needed. There's a lot of innovation going on here, but what's next, Rob? How will networks become even more energy efficient in the future? Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to predict the future, but there's a number of things that are happening, I suppose. Uh, obviously, the, the, the big one that everyone is, is looking off to the horizon for is, is 6G, where we expect to see much higher capacity. Uh, so with that higher capacity, we'll get much lower uh, energy per bit required. Um, so we're already experimenting in our labs, working with different solutions with, with indium phosphide solutions to see what are the best ones out there. Um, but there's other things that we're working on as well. Um, we're doing a lot of things with, with liquid cooling, for example. Uh, Fujitsu does a lot of work with supercomputing, and we've taken some of the liquid cooling capabilities from that and, and put, started to put that into our, our optical portfolio. So uh, right now we're, in the, we're, we're able to transmit 1.2 terabits per second on a single wavelength, and, and we expect that to be growing to about 1.6 fairly soon. So that's a lot of capacity to put into a single box and that generates a, a lot of heat. Um, so we've used the liquid cooling to help dissipate that heat uh, much more efficiently than you would be able to do with, with, with conventional cooling systems. Um, so right now we're deploying that mainly in long haul optical networks, but as we get closer towards 6G, we anticipate that capacity requirements are going to get much higher and we might see these kinds of things being deployed in, in metro environments as well. And uh, who knows, maybe we, we one day start putting it into, into the radios as well. 
Uh, I think that's kind of the beauty with Open RAN is that the operators really do have the ability to use whatever the best of breed solution is at any point in time. And so that's always motivating people like us to, to innovate as much as possible. And who knows, maybe that's going to be liquid cooling or, or maybe it'll be something else. Absolutely. Well, unfortunately, we must leave it there for now, Rob. Great talking with you. And thanks so much for sharing your views with us today. Thanks so much. 